I've never uh, met this young lady. I've never uh, chatted with her, but I sure have rooted like crazy watching her on the slopes. She is the seven-time Olympic and world ski champion that you watch so much uh, on NBC. And the Tokyo Olympics, I should mention, uh, begins next summer on NBC. Peacock will have a role as well as it's your home for the Olympic Games. Always w- enjoy watching at work on behalf of this country and the way that she holds herself in doing so. The seven-time Olympic and world ski champ, Michaela Schifrin, here on the program. How are you today? Hi, I'm I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing fine. I know I I, I kind of started the interview with that question, and that's my normal <laughs> default. Even though I read the New York Times story on you saying that, you know, when you're asked that question, you don't quite know how to answer it these days. But that's my <laughs> no, de- all good. M- my def- um, that's I'm still taking it as like small talk, just starting a conversation that. or tr- trying to. It is that. Where have I found you? Where are you on the planet? right now i'm uh at home in edwards colorado right now i'm three days away from shipping off to europe or um what we hope to be the start of the ski season the race season right and and i guess um and that's that's one of the major reasons why you're on today about keep the flame alive dot org and what is going on uh in the world with COVID 19 you know we're all focused clearly about the tokyo games and how it's affected but the beijing games in 2022 this is pretty significant as well and it obviously this involves your late father as well i want to give you the floor here on what you'd like everyone to know about if you don't mind yeah well you know during this time like you like you mentioned obviously tokyo um, has been majorly affected by the pandemic, but it it snow it kind of snowballs no pun intended into the fall the upcoming Olympics, and it I think it might go you know beyond Beijing even, but um, for the winter athletes who are also pre- trying to prepare for um, the upcoming race season this this season um, competing, but then also next season, which is the Olympic season. It's these these two years are incredibly important for um, for training and getting prepared and having our athletes be the the best prepared we can be um, going into the Olympics and with the pandemic, the snow sports industry was hit incredibly hard. Like I think pretty much across the board, all industries were hit, but definitely having to close down pretty much everything in snow sports several months earlier than expected. And, um, you know, having to shut down U.S. ski and snowboard just had to shut down everything like everyone else. And it, it took a huge hit. And then, you know, kind of waking up in the face of, a pandemic and trying to ha- how do we manage running everything again and you know you have a lot of extra costs um a lot of extra travel um travel with including quarantine which adds 14 days to travel and and meals and lodging for athletes that us ski and snowboard would have has been covering um you have testing costs just just doing covid testing um was going to add i think the number i saw was an, an extra million or more to the budget so um what back in the spring af it was a little bit in conjunction after my dad um passed away a, a lot of people were contacting my family and asking where they could donate and we didn't really have an answer in the immediate weeks following his um, his passing and, and the celebration of life. But um, we sort of started talking with some really big supporters on the U.S. Ski and Snowboard and um, some, some people who have donated in the past and came up with this idea of starting a resiliency fund that would bridge the gap that we've lost in, fu- in other fundraising events um, that at c- extra costs that athletes are facing personally and that U.S. Ski and Snowboard is p- facing in order to help all of the athletes across the board train and, um, you know, use this fund to bridge the gap in costs and try to get us all to be able to keep training and competing heading into the Olympics and be fully prepared as we otherwise would have. And then the it's also it's kind of a twofold goal. There's another side of it which is hugely important and part part of why we named it in honor of my dad was the message of resiliency. And especially right now I think it's a really important message to be spreading that um 
we all, all of us, everybody, no matter what you do, no matter what your job is, no matter your political backgrounds, everybody needs to come together and um, and un- unite, really, um, and unite behind this message of resiliency, of that you can still be strong in the face of disaster, in the face of heartache and pain and just terrible things that are going on in everybody's life right now that are going to leave scars for a long time to come. But, um, you know, if, if I give you some strength, maybe you can co- give me some of your strength and together we can get through it. And that's, that's where keep the flame alive came from. You can, there's a, more details at keep the flame org, like you had mentioned, but, um, that's where that whole message came from. And I think, the fundraising is hugely important for athletes on the U.S. ski and snowboard, but the um, message of spreading resiliency, that's for me in a lot of ways that's equally as important. It's a mental battle. It has been for me this entire summer, and um, there's been we've, – we've done some interviews with – I have an interview up on the website. A couple other – several other U.S. ski and snowboard athletes have some really great interviews and a lot of great insight to share about resiliency on the website. And, um, we're planning to just continue sharing stories and continue sharing that message because um, whether you're able to donate or not, I think everybody can can use a little something that will uplift them, keep, especially right now. Keepthefflamealive.org. Michaela Schifrin here on The Rich Eisen Show. I lost my dad in December. Oh so, my, I'm sorry. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry for your loss. My, my dad was 82, um, and, you know, uh, it was it was still sudden. Um, your dad was younger, and obviously it was it was still sudden. But just hearing you say, you know, I can give you strength, you can give me strength, that was my strength in the yeah. immediate aftermath. It really does mean a lot. You know, it, it really does. And I had not lost a parent, and I really didn't know what it was like until yeah. it happened. And I would always hear that, you know, like, what can I do for a friend? And they're like, well, just you reaching out or you doing X, Y, and Z really means a lot. And it did, yeah. you know, it, it, it really did. And, and for you to combine that along with obviously something that you're known for and, uh, um, you know, obviously your, your dad inspired you in, it really is beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're, we're all, everybody involved with getting the resiliency fund, you know, started and, mm-hmm. and up and running. I'm super grateful and I'm really proud of it. We're all really proud of it. And I'm excited. Everybody, the the response has been amazing. It's only, you know, been publicly launched for a little over 24 hours and people have been, I'm, I'm so proud of how we've all, we've gotten the message across because I didn't want it to be something like, oh, you know, please donate. <laughs> Even though even though we're looking for donations, I wanted it to be like I'm. We're, we just have to help each other here. And like you said, yeah, people reaching out saying, "What can I do?" Oftentimes, there's not something they can do. For for me, I'm like, you can't do anything. But thank you for sending a message. That that alone is, you know, that just gave me something to look at and made me smile a little bit. And that was the most you could do at this time. Well, I mean, and you just keep doing you, um, Michaela. You know, uh, I know. Um, you know, on your Twitter and social media, you've been you've been talking about life events, and you know, you'd probably get a lot of st- stick to skiing and a lot of you know, <laughs> a couple of those. St- stick stick to just being USA, and you know, you you've got a voice, you've got you've got something going on, but just also know this, you know, I've got a. I've got a seven-year-old girl at home, um, and my wife put her on skis literally uh, at age three, um, which oh is uh, well, and which That's is exciting. It's, which is exciting, you know, because especially since her dad loves apres ski more than ski. Like my problem, <laughs> Michaela, is stopping. You know what I mean? Like I have an issue stopping. That's my concern <laughs> is how to stop. But you know, but us being able to show you know her, you know, you uh, means a lot. It really does. So you should know that as well. I know yeah. I'm not asking any questions. I'm just kind of having a conversation with you. But no, that's really it, you, nice. That's you know, really nice of you to say thank you. you no, know, and we're seeing pictures of you and your dad right now. We're seeing some video of, of that. When did you first get on skis yourself? When did that happen? Um, I you? was 
two and a half ish. Is it? Um, it was in my driveway actually. My mom and dad. They did this with my brother, who's two and two and a half years older than I am, and um, taught us how to ski first in our living room. They put on those tiny little plastic skis and just had us like walk around the living room. Um, and just get used to the feeling and then took us out in a, in a sled, towed us up to the top of the driveway and had us kind of ski down it. And then, then we got to graduate to the mountain and then we couldn't hold either one of us back once we got there. That's it. That's it. So, you know, you're saying there's a chance for my daughter. Basically, what we're saying. But certainly Definitely. wasn't in the drive. Certainly wasn't in the driveway here in Los Angeles. I'll, 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 I'll tell you that. So you're heading off to Germany, and then so what's your plan? Like, what do you want to happen? Obviously, the the virus has its own say, clearly. But what yeah. what what are you what are you hoping for uh, from as a through line from from here all the way to 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 I guess the end of this year, even with Beijing in mind. Yeah, what are you, gosh. What are you hoping for? Um, yeah, I'm hoping you know, looking at a. a quite a few of the other sports right now and how they are operating um you know basketball formula one a lot of a lot of sports are rising to the challenge finding a way to include fans in a different way than before but still including fans um and being able to compete and actually have their games and continue with the playoffs and race and that's what i hope for ski racing is that you know, our season starts on October 17th. It's supposed to start on October 17th, and I'm hoping that um, our, our, the whole World Cup circuit will all be able to come together. And, you know, when I talk about the message of resiliency, it's really about everybody just saying, hey, uh, this, is, this is less about me and more about us all being able to have our sport and to, to do our sport in the midst of a pandemic. And the pandemic's not going to go away before we are supposed to have our first race of the season. So we have to manage it and do the best we can. And it's great to see so many sports, you know, promoting masks and have, getting the testing and getting their athletes in a bubble and trying to, trying to be aware of the global climate while you're still doing what you're, you know, hoping to do in your own little world. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it sets an example for everyone else and for all the people out there saying, you know, we can't shut down our economy and do this and that. And like, this is how we continue life and sports and business and work and our jobs and could keep the economy going. This is how we're going to do it. So it's, it's not like an either or situation where we got to find a way to show up today and make it happen today, given our current circumstances. And I think that's what I hope for ski racing is that we find a way to do that. Me too. In terms of resiliency, all you got to do is look at Jamal Murray and the Nuggets right there oh in Colorado, right? That's right? That last game. Oh, that <laughs> I cannot believe <laughs> I the final shot. That was like I tore know. my heart out and just smushed it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's look, but that means all there's just one more loss for them until they really get it going. That's the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna go. They're gonna go another four wins, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, this has never happened in history." And Jamal, like, can you can we just quickly touch on the fact Please. that Jamal looks small on the court, and he's six four. He's and he's playing like he's seven four. He's yeah, he's not, like, he's not a small guy, but he looks like a, a little ninja. It's unbelievable. I it's really fun to watch them play right now. It, it it is. And and obviously they have been counted out so many damn times and they yeah. keep getting off uh, they keep getting off the mat. Uh but here comes LeBron and Anthony Davis. I thought they did have him again. I really thought that this was uh this was it, but you know, but I'm glad that you're 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 why but you're right. It's great to see them in the bubble doing their thing and you know maybe again that they can be more of a continue to be an inspiration to you and everyone else there yeah. in the colorado area keep the flame alive dot org uh the jeff yeah. schifrin athlete resiliency fund helps fuel u.s ski and snowboard athletes olympic dreams go there and donate right now it's been a pleasure chatting with you i root for you all the time and um and you're welcome here anytime call we'll figure out what the time difference is from germany maybe we'll just catch up <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Thanks. You got, you got it. It's, it's uh, U.S. Olympic and World Ski Champion seven times over. Two-time Olympics, five-time world champion, M Michaela Schifrin here.